The musical pigeon described Quasimoto. Quasimoto was the most revolting bird to look at with his feathers pushing through the wrinkled scarlet skin mixed with the horrible yellow down feathers that cover baby pigeons and makes them look as though they have been peroxiding their hair. Why did Larry choose the name Quasimoto? Owing to the disgusting and fat appearance of the pigeon, Larry suggested to call him Quasimoto. Why did Quasimoto believe he was not a bird? Support your answer with examples from the text. Quasimoto had an unusual childhood and thus he became convinced that he was not a bird at all and refused to fly. He could feed himself and when all his feathers had grown, Quasimoto retained a sprig of yellow down on his head which gave him the appearance of a rather arrogant judge wearing a small wig. What music did Quasimoto respond to? Quasimoto seemed to recognize two different varieties of music, the waltz and the military march. For ordinary music, he would waggle as close to the gramophone as possible and sit there with a pouting chest, eyes half closed, purring softly to himself. But if the tune was a waltz, he would move round and round the machine, bowing, twisting and going tremulously. For a march, on the other hand, he straightened himself up to his full height puffed out his chest and stamped up and down the room while his coup became so rich and throaty that he seemed in danger of strangling himself. What happened to Quasimoto once he began nesting? Quasimoto began nesting and became wilder and wilder, treating the family as though they were her worst enemies, slinking up to the kitchen door for food as if she feared for her life. Why was it a sad day for the family when they discovered the egg? When the family discovered the egg, it was a sad day for them because he never quite recovered from this. Then he became embittered, gloomy and started to peck irritably if they tried to pick him up. Then he laid another egg and his nature changed completely. Reference to the context. I realized of course that this destruction was not intentional, but even so I was annoyed. Describe the destruction. One day, Cosimoto spilled a bottle of green ink in the exact center of a large and very beautiful map that the family had just completed. What was the punishment? Cosimoto tried for a week to get back into favor by sitting outside the door and going through the crack. The last time, to ecstasy of admiration. What happened to Cosimoto? Quasimoto became wilder and wilder, treating the family as though they were their worst enemies, slinking up to the kitchen door for food as if she feared for her life. Was Quasimoto really shy? What could be the reason? Yes, Quasimoto was really shy. Quasimoto was sitting in an olive tree, going in the most pompous and shy manner. Further along the branch, a large and very masculine looking pigeon twisted and put in a perfect ecstasy of admiration, perhaps seeing the masculine pigeon, Quasimoto felt shy. From where is the text extracted from? The text, the musical pigeon is extracted from My Family and Other Animals by Gerald Duran. What was the name of the tortoise? Achilles was the name of the tortoise. From whom did the author obtain the pigeon? The author obtained the pigeon from the rose petal man. When the pigeon was young, what did Quasimoto feed on? When Quasimoto was young, he had to be forced fed on bread and milk and soaked corn. How did Quasimoto get on to a table or a chair? If Quasimoto wanted to get on to a table or a chair, he stood below it, ducking his head and going in a rich contralto until someone lifted him up. Explain. His sparkling chest pouted out with annoyance at your cruelty. Quasimoto was always eager to join the family in anything they did and would even try to come for walks with them. This, however, they had to stop for either they carried him on their shoulder, which was risking an accident to clothes, or else he is led to walk behind. If they let him walk, then they had to slow down their own pace to suit the situation. For they would get too far ahead, they would hear the most frantic and pleading coups and turn round to find Quasimoto running desperately after them. His tail wagging from side to side, his sparkling chest pouted out with annoyance at their cruelty. Explain why Quasimoto is called a musical pigeon. It was Larry who discovered that Quasimoto was a musical pigeon. Not only did he like music, but he actually seemed to recognize two 
different varieties, the balls and the military march. For ordinary music, he would battle as close to the gramophone as possible and sit there with a pouting chest, eyes half closed, purring softly to himself. But if the tune was a waltz, he would move round and round the machine, bowing, twisting and cooing tremulously. For a march, on the other hand, he straightened himself up to his full height, puffed out his chest and stamped up and down the room. While his coup became so rich and throaty that he seemed in danger of strangling himself, he never attempted to perform these actions for any other kind of music except marches and bells. What did Quasimodo do if he had not heard any music for some time? If Quasimodo had not heard any music for some time, he would in his enthusiasm at hearing the gramophone do a march for a waltz or vice versa, but he would eventually stop and correct himself halfway through. What was the last time the author saw Quasimodo? The last time the author saw Quasimodo, she was sitting in an olive tree cooing in the most pompous and shy manner. Further along the branch, a large and very masculine looking pigeon twisted and cooed in a perfect ecstasy of admiration.